Something you can expect nearly any video game to take advantage of is reaction time. From stringing together combos, to quick time events, or firing your gun before someone across from you does. It's a simple, low-risk, high-reward mechanic that fits perfectly in the push-button, receive-bacon world of gaming. But did you know not all reactions are created equal? In fact, despite the relatively slow nature of sound versus light, Due to the extra cognitive steps required to process images, you actually react more quickly to sound. I recently took a simple online reaction test that you can find in the description below to see this in action for myself. And sure enough, at 130 milliseconds and 197 milliseconds on audio reactions over visual. Plugging those numbers into a game running at 60 frames per second is four whole frames of reactive advantage when playing with the sound on versus sound off. And as any fan of fighting games will tell you, that's not an insignificant difference. A point we hit on repeatedly in feedback for our monthly sound design competitions is nailing a satisfying and well-timed indicator of execution. An audio cue that lets the player know the thing they're trying to do has succeeded. In this video, we're going to record and design some fighting game sounds, and talk about what makes up a good fighting game soundscape. Executing moves in a fighting game is unexpectedly akin to the rhythm section of a song. If we listen to some of these, it's not a stretch to think of them as pieces of a drum kit. The whooshes, jumps, and blocks occupy the space of cymbals and a kick drum, whereas landing a good old-fashioned four-sec to the face blasts the crackling punctuation of a satisfying snare strike. The throw flow and heave ho of combos, landed in rhythmic succession, practically leads to head bobbing and toe tapping, regardless of whether or not there's music. Predicting an event and then flawlessly timing its execution is like a shot of pure satisfaction straight to the brain. Another thing you'll find in games is the volume of an event typically correlating to the importance of the event. The way Junkrat's ultimate line can be heard shouted all over the map. Fire in the hole! Or how Jigglypuff's rest overpowers the rest of sounds in Smash Bros, finalizing in the killing blow being a massive glass-shattering sense of finality. I think it would be awesome to see this scaled down and applied more dynamically to individual moves in fighting games, where a punch sound effect is louder based on the amount of damage given, or how someone's health is. Smash Bros does a version of this but using crowd sounds and opponent fragility to build excitement as they get ever more likely to fly off into the blast zone. These are all beautiful examples of audio dynamics. Every sound should have its own spot in the space of the soundscape. The volume of a sound should directly correlate to the danger of the action. Footsteps to jumps, to whooshes, to punches, to specials. Crescendoing from quietest to loudest, so you know what to look out for, or to emphasize what just happened to you. Imagine if the whooshes were louder than the punches. A swing and a miss would become just as terrifying as an actual hit and a weird stalemate between the whooshes and hits occur because the part that really matters is no longer taking focus. Let's break down what we need to make a proper hit sound. We'll start with the whooshes. The swing before the strike, the calm before the storm. Like a good comedy bit, the whoosh is the setup to the, oh well, would you look at this, the ever so appropriately named punchline. An anticipatory sound to build the satisfying predictability of the eventual strike. A good punch or hit sound can be broken down into two parts. The first is called the attack. While this is a very appropriate name in this instance, it is actually a term in sound construction referencing the beginning of a sound. You can have a slow attack, and you can have a fast attack. Unsurprisingly, this is the one you need for punch or hit sound effects. If you think back to the drum comparison, it's what gives it that punctual point of rhythm. It's all hits. You hit a drum just like you hit a face. Part two is where the sound lies in the frequency spectrum. Like a good explosion, the tastiest hits exist in a frequency window. Put a pin in 200 hertz and work around that point to see what sounds the most satisfying. For example, if we push it up from there a little, we can put a nice clean emphasis on the punch. 
taking these parts of the equation, we now have what we need to start sourcing a sound for our punch. We want something with a fast attack, hovering around 200 hertz. As we know, there's only one way to get a fast attack. So just wander around your house and start hitting things. There's plenty of old tricks to make hit sounds, like from Indiana Jones where they hit a leather jacket with a wooden bat. A little bit of a thud with a little bit of a slap. But I'm going to use this air zooka that I have laying around because it's a more unique source. Now we've got our starting sound, but even with a bit of processing, it's pretty empty sounding. We need to build out the frequency spectrum a bit more. In addition, I recorded a glove being slapped against my hand for some higher frequencies and hitting a garage door for lower frequencies. As for the whoosh sound, just grab anything that you can swing for that classic air whipping sound we all know and love. Think about the different pitch you might be able to get from a wire hanger compared to a broom handle. I'm going to use a simple metal spatula in my kitchen. So this is what our final sound effect sounds like. If I wanted to make changes to this for different characters or different move types, I might do anything from simple pitch adjustments to recording fresh hits on different objects to layer in place of previous sounds. And to highlight the previously mentioned power scale, I've built a simple system in FMOD using a scale from 0 to 10. When it's at 0, it does the least damage. Therefore, we get the lightest hit. And at 10, it's the most powerful hit in the game, so it does the most damage. And a system like this doesn't have to necessarily be based off of damage given. It can also be based off of a health bar, or even knockback, like we mentioned Smash Bros does with the crowd sounds. If we strip all this back to just the first sound we recorded, we can repurpose its emptiness into being the lightest hit that does the least damage. And as we scale the power of hits up to 10, we can hear how they change as we approach the most powerful attack. We're going to raise it by increments of 2. So from 0, to 2, to 4, to 6, to 8, and to 10. So as you can see, quite a bit of thought and strategy goes into making fighting game sounds. If you're going to try making fighting sound effects yourself, I highly recommend you try to use the same approach and the mindset to choosing your source recordings. Take some pictures and tag us on Twitter if you do. You can find us on Blip Sounds. We'd love to see what creative things you all come up with. Good. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe for more on our YouTube channel, or share the video on Twitter and tell us how it helped you out and how much you learned. If you want to learn more FMOD, we actually have the Game Audio Training Series, which is live right now. In the Game Audio Training Series, we strongly encourage a hands-on approach to game audio, where you get to integrate sounds into FMOD and Unity and even make sound effects from scratch. So we feel that you can really learn a lot. You can check out blipsounds.com in the description below to check it out. Anyways, I hope this was helpful for you all, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.